$200 headphones versus $50 headphones. Are the $50 headphones four times worse than the $200 headphones? In some ways, yes, in some ways, no. But are the $200 headphones four times better than the $50 headphones? Not really. But before we hop into the specs of each of these headphones, you should know that they are both S tier headphones. And you can find a complete buying guide and a tier list on my website. I'll have that link for you guys if you're curious about other S tier headphones, A tier headphones, things along those lines. Now, the point of today's comparison isn't to see which of these headphones is better because, hint, hint, yes, the Pixel Buds Pro are better, but to see how close these $50 headphones are to headphones costing almost four times as much. Now, the $50 headphones I will be comparing with the Pixel Buds Pro are the QCY HT05. These are headphones that I would classify as S tier. Now, here's some of the specs. We have 40 decibels of active noise canceling. We have Bluetooth 5.2. We have six mics for better environmental noise canceling when calling. We have a flagship chipset pairing all this from a company called Wuchi. We have IPX5. We have 30 hours of battery life, six hours of battery life with ANC on, seven and a half hours with ANC off. You can charge them up five times approximately. So you're looking at anywhere between 25 to 30, 32 hours, give or take. We have three different ANC profiles, and within those ANC profiles, we have the ability to customize and choose between different types of ANC depending upon the environment using an app. We have 10 millimeter graphing drivers. We have some customizable controls within the QCY app. We have AAC and SBC audio codecs, so no exotic APTX, but you guys shouldn't care about that, and I did a dedicated video on codec up here. Now, next up, Pixel Buds Pro. We have ANC, pass through with an ambient mode and active noise canceling off. Bluetooth 5, IPX5, AAC with support for spatial audio and head tracking if you can find content that supports it. We have 11 millimeter drivers and we have 11 hours of battery life with ANC off, seven hours of battery life with ANC on. And the Pixel Buds Pro are just an absolute monster when it comes to battery life. We have always on Google Assistant, so you just have to say, okay, blah, 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 and your assistant will work perfectly. The Pixel Buds also have this black magic wizardry called Active EQ, where you make an EQ for how you want the headphones to sound, and then the headphones analyze the audio in the environment or the environmental audio you have, and maybe there's more uh, bass in the environment, so it gives you stronger bass, and they have this thing so that they always kind of sound similar no matter what environment that you have, and it's absolutely phenomenal. The Pixel Buds also feature in-ear detection and swipe controls for uh, adjusting the volume, if that's something that you really care about. I'm gonna start the physical comparison off with the case. Now the Mel Buds case does feel pretty cheap and hollow. Now the lid does stay open and there is a spring, but it doesn't stay open that well. The fit and finish on them is fine and they feature this kind of matte white plastic, actually quite similar to that of the Pixel Buds Pro, but overall the case just kind of feels average. It feels kind of cheap. Uh, we have USB-C charging, which is nice. We have a little indicator light on the bottom to show that the case has charged, but outside of that, um, the headphones themselves don't feel like they're gonna age particularly well. The case of the Pixel Buds, on the other hand, feels significantly more like premium, like more robust, better finished. And I've dropped the headphones a couple of times before I had a silicone case on them, and the case really hasn't da like been damaged at all, actually. Um, the hinge on the Pixel Buds Pro that I have still feels great. There's very little play, and I'm now using these headphones almost every day. Now, both of these cases do feature an LED light to indicate battery, and they feature a button so that you can repair the headphones if the buds themselves become disconnected. The case of the Pixel Buds features wireless charging, and it is truly a smart case where the headphones begin charging as soon as you open up the lid. The QCY case is... Yeah, not a, not a smart case, but... I mean, the, the case works pretty well. Oops, I think I, oh no. Okay, all better. 
By comparison, the case of the Pixel Buds is truly a smart case where you open it and the phone actually interacts with a wireless transmitter inside of the case of the Pixel Buds. You can see how much battery percentage is on the Pixel Buds, the firmware of the Pixel Buds case themselves, uh, whereas the QCY case is just kind of a not a smart case. They do both feature USB-C charging. The Pixel Buds have Qi wireless charging, which is a lot more conven convenient. Convenient, oh my God. Um, overall, the Pixel Buds cost four times the price of the HTO5 Mellow Buds. And in this case, the case actually does feel like it's made four times better. Now, next up, we gotta move on to the earbuds because this is actually much closer and holding these headphones side by side, it's interesting to see the differences in overall design. The HTO5 has a small stem with a directional mic to go ahead and pick up your voice better. And a lot of the weight of the headphones is actually towards the bottom in that stem. Whereas the Pixel Buds have this kind of bean shape and they put a lot of the weight in the headphones above Above it. And sometimes it makes the Pixel Buds feel like they're gonna fall out because they definitely are heavier than the QCY HTO5, but I haven't really had any issues with the Pixel Buds falling out, so I don't know if I can say that one design is better than another. I certainly like the design of the QCY HTO5 better, but they don't have as big of an area for touch controls and the Pixel Buds do offer swipe touch controls, which I kind of like more than like the semi reprogrammable controls of the QCY HTO5. This is a lot more of like a personal preference thing. And if you're new to the world of truly wireless headphones, you probably won't care about either of these things. I've just re like reviewed 50 to 75 pairs of headphones in my time. You guys can check out the reviews below. Both of the headphones do offer venting to reduce the stethoscopic effect, which is a feature that I love. Um, the, st the stethoscopic effect is that plugged ear feeling that you guys might have when wearing headphones. And because both of these headphones are vented, it not only helps with the sound stage, but it does reduce in that stethoscopic effect. Now talking about features, on paper, both of these earbuds are packed full of features. And in full transparency, I got the QCY HTO5 before I got my Pixel Buds. And at the time, I thought that the HTO5 were some of the best headphones that I'd ever reviewed. And I think that they even now still stand up pretty well to the Pixel Buds. It just seems like the Pixel Buds have another level when it comes to ANC, as in, way, way, way more like immersive ANC where you just kind of get removed from the outside world and you're just in this active noise canceling world and you're listening to stuff while it still has a fantastic uh, stage and like there's still a lot of space in music. The Pixel Buds do a lot better at this. Um, another underrated feature of the Pixel Buds is the dynamic EQ because these headphones always seem to have the same sound signature or they always kind of seem to sound the same no matter whether you're using them with transparency mode, whether you have ANC on, ANC off, and the transparency mode really does make it feel like you're wearing like an AirPods style type of headphones and it does an amazing job of picking up on voice and I have no problems speaking my second language of Vietnamese khi minh muon nói chuyện về người Viet khi minh đi bộ ra ngoài if you're Vietnamese, you understood that. Now, the sound quality of the HTO5 isn't to be looked down on, and the fact that they can be heavily customized and tweaked inside their app to sound more how you want it is fantastic. That said, if you're someone that's listening to a variety of different genres, rock and roll, uh, hip hop, electronic, dance music, spoken word, having to go into the QCY app to kind of tweak those settings to get the best overall listening experience isn't the greatest experience itself. Although the QCY app is fine, it's just not necessarily that convenient. Whereas the Pixel Buds have their always on EQ and that EQ kind of analyzes the surrounding area and then changes the sound signature to best support that. So are the Pixel Buds actually four times better headphones at the end of the day? Yes and no. $200 headphones, $200 headphones versus $50 headphones. Is there any comparison? Yes. And before we hop into the specs of each of these pairs of headphones, you should know that $200 head, then the $200 lap, 